When you think of San Antonio sports, you no doubt think the Spurs. Loyalty to the silver and black runs deep. San Antonio bleeds black and silver. Being there, you feel the energy and it really just kind of goes through you and it feels like a whole big family. Me wearing my shirt or like if, if anyone's wearing Spurs gear, it kind of like is a conversation starter. They are a, an organization that is embedded in the lifeblood of our community. They are there when we uh, are in uh, hardship. They are there when we're in celebration. But for years, city leaders have tried to attract another pro sports team with little luck. We're the seventh most populous city in the U.S. and growing every year. We're the 31st largest television market, and we've got that team spirit. In many ways, we seem well equipped to support another franchise. San Antonio has a young population. San Antonio has a diverse population. San Antonio has a population I think that's fully spent on sports. Sports is something that everyone can kind of come around. You go to a party, you go to a bar, you watch the game, you know. You know, you can keep your mind off the politics yeah, and yeah, coronavirus yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. So why can't San Antonio catch and keep another team? I think a lot of it goes back to financial support. Just about every failed franchise that has come into San Antonio is generally the reason is financial or lack thereof financial support somewhere down the line. We have tended to grow the same companies and same families businesses in San Antonio for too long. Those things have really been what has held us back in terms of getting uh, an NFL or Major League Baseball or hockey or any other kind of uh, professional soccer or, or those kinds of sports leagues. In this episode of KSAT Explains, we're taking a look back at San Antonio sports history and a look forward at how well positioned we are to welcome another pro team in the future. KSAT Explains. KSAT Explains. KSAT Explains. KSAT Explains. On demand, in-depth perspective. Perspective on stories we bring you in our newscasts throughout the day. We're looking into concerns over voting safety during a pandemic and the battle over mail-in voting. A look at how the protests and demonstrations have played out in our city and an examination of what it means to be black in San Antonio. An issue that you have likely felt the effects of, rising property taxes. The roots of Tejano run deep in South Texas. We examine the cultural impact the music has had in San Antonio. San Antonio is a major city with a lot to offer, but when it comes to attracting another pro sports team, so far we haven't been so successful. Thanks for joining us for this episode of KSAT Explains. I'm Myra Arthur. It seems that every couple of years, there's talk of the possibility of San Antonio welcoming another pro sports team. From Major League Baseball to Major League Soccer, so far our city just can't seem to score. The history of our dashed hopes is prolific. Before we take a look at how likely our luck is to change in the future, let's take a look back at where we've been. RJ Marquez has the highlights. We are a major league city. We're the seventh largest city and growing, one of the fastest growing cities in the country. So our outlook on sports uh, is among the best in the country, I believe. The country's seventh largest city, but still only one major professional sports team. But it hasn't been for a lack of trying. Besides the Spurs, San Antonio has been somewhat unlucky and had several missteps with pro sports. You can trace our pro sports history to many failed football franchises. Remember the San Antonio Wings, Toros, or Riders? They all came and went in the blink of an eye. The Gunslingers offered some hope in the mid 80s for some football stability. They had the right approach. They had a cap on salaries. You know, the most paid could be the quarterback, but there was a cap on his salary. There were guys willing to play. The fans loved the output. They had a TV contract with ESPN, which was a startup company back then. What could possibly go wrong? And then Donald Trump paid Herschel Walker a $5 million personal services contract to get around the cap and soon after that the los angeles express paid steve young 41 million dollar contract and the league's wheels just started to wobble and eventually fell off there have been close to a dozen football franchises that have called san antonio home and didn't last the commanders were the latest flop but in the early 2000s san antonio felt like it was getting close to getting an nfl franchise the alamo dome was ready and local businessman red mccombs owned the minnesota vikings but any plans for relocation fell through 
Then in 2005, San Antonio showcased its NFL chops when the New Orleans Saints were forced to relocate after Hurricane Katrina. The Alamo Dome hosted three sold out Saints games. When the Saints were here and they were playing as the New Orleans Saints, but it was San Antonio fans packing the Alamo Dome, you, you could feel it. It was like a college atmosphere. That's how much they wanted it here. But it wasn't enough. And to make matters worse, the city has been used as leverage for other owners. Raiders owner Mark Davis threatened to relocate his team from Oakland to San Antonio several times unless he got a new stadium built. Well, he got his wish, but it was in Las Vegas. This despite San Antonio rolling out the red carpet. I said, I think last year, the year before, uh, I think San Antonio is an NFL city within 10 years. I still stand by that. And that is because of the evolution that's happening within the National Football League. The fact that it, it, it too is becoming an international league particularly with its sights on Latin America. What about other sports? Major League Baseball has not expanded since 1998, and there are no signs of a franchise relocating in the near future. And then there's the other football, soccer. San Antonio Mayor Ed Garza was in talks to get a Major League Soccer team in the early 2000s, but his successor, Mayor Phil Hardberger, put an end to that when he took office. 15 years later, San Antonio tried to make up for that mistake. The city and Spurs worked to get an MLS franchise, but it was too late and there is now a franchise up the road in Austin. So we remain a city of nearly 2 million people with only one major pro sports team to cheer for. I, I think we're sold short, not by us, not by anybody here. The people that run this city, that are the movers and shakers, so to speak, they know the potential this city has and has already. But yeah, there's still that part out there that, you know, the Alamo is covered by dust roads around it, you know, that sort of thing. They don't, they don't realize, I think, what a modern city this has become. So how well positioned is San Antonio to welcome another pro sports team? A lot factors into that answer, much more than just whether there are enough fans to go to the games. It's the companies in this city, the kinds of jobs we have here, income levels. Then there are the pro sports teams that already exist in Texas. Could they stand in our way? Let's take a look at what's a win for San Antonio and where we might be fumbling. Any team needs a place to play, fans to fill the seats, and team owners need reasons to invest in a city. One score for San Antonio, we've proven our home court advantage with our flagship team, the Spurs. Well, certainly, I, I, I mean, San Antonio has all the things going for it. You know, we're, we're rapidly growing. Uh, we're a Sunbelt city. Uh, we have a great population of things. Uh, we've supported very, very well uh, sports franchises here before. Money from individual fans only goes so far. Teams also look for corporate sponsorships and companies willing to buy tickets to fill those high dollar box seats. An argument against San Antonio welcoming another pro sports team is a lack of those corporations. The city's biggest companies like USAA, Valero, HEB can't sponsor at all. Bear County Commissioner Tommy Calvert says that's a challenge. We don't do enough to help our mid-sized businesses go from a million dollars to 10 million in revenue or a $10 million company to a $100 million company. Those are the folks who buy the corporate box seats and, and that's really the gravy is those big sponsorship boxes, luxury boxes and other uh, tickets uh, packages that you can sell as a professional sports team. Part of building up those businesses, Calvert says, is creating a workforce that can sustain them. We have 25% of our adult population that reads at a fifth grade level. To be honest with you, countries like Costa Rica and Central America have a higher adult literacy than we do. We can't just focus our, our efforts just on the youth. We have to do something about where adults are in their literacy level and bring it up and have them make higher wages after getting them reading and into job training programs. Then there are amenities, that place for teams to not only play, but something for fans to enjoy. Restaurants around a stadium, places to hang out before and after a game. The Wolf Stadium is a fine little minor league park, but a new stadium needs to be built. And that's kind of a chicken versus the egg thing. Um, do you want to build a major league stadium with the hope that you'll get a major league team, or do you want to try to get a major league team here first and then build the stadium once you have the team? You're seeing a, a, a significant pushback in the use of, of public resources for the building of stadiums, for instance, uh, and that's something that, that is on the minds of a lot of league owners. And so what I would say about that is that um, one of the reasons why I'm very optimistic about the pro sports uh, future for San Antonio is that we are doing it the right way. 
Um, we are investing in the people of San Antonio and access to economic mobility. As our economy changes, so does the size of San Antonio. The fan base for the Spurs, for example, has become more regional, stretching into Austin. So perhaps we could see interest in another pro sports team in San Antonio coming from outside San Antonio. The San Antonio Spurs get so many fans coming from Austin and throughout the region. They just developed recently uh, a really cool VIP section where a helicopter could be flown and land near the AT&T arena and just to get all those high priced fans from Austin who want to come down and watch this play. And so yeah, yeah, if we get the right team here, I think you'd see a tremendous draw for people from Austin who want to see us play and also uh, from the surrounding region. Texas already has a long list of pro teams. The Cowboys, the Texans, the Rangers, the Astros, plus for example, with Major League Soccer, well, they already have the franchise in Austin. I'm not sure if it makes sense for them to have a franchise in Austin and also here in San Antonio. And then some people have said, okay, that if the San Antonio were to get, oh, an Astros from college team, would Houston fight for that? Uh, would Dallas fight for that? Um, if we're trying to get a Major League Baseball team, uh, would the Astros want to work against us? A team is as good as its players, and you could argue a city as good as its people. So investing in the people of San Antonio may be the key play to welcoming another professional team. When we have a strong workforce, uh, we begin to attract uh, many more of the employers that become the financial base that ultimately begin to invest in, in the, the spoke, pro sports franchises. So um, that's beginning to happen. It's a it's an it's a um, process, it's an evolution, but that is happening in a, in a very real way here in San Antonio, which is why I think that as a growing city, but also a city that's starting to see its economic trajectory improve significantly, we're gonna see much more activity in the pro sports market looking at San Antonio as being a place uh, to invest. As we mentioned, teams need that place to play but it's not cheap to build or even upgrade a stadium, which leads us to the question, who should pay for that? It's not uncommon for taxpayers to foot at least part of the bill. The SBC Center opened on San Antonio's east side in 2002. Bear County taxpayers covered most of the $193 million in total construction costs. Spurs Sports and Entertainment covered only $46.5 million, according to reporting by the San Antonio Express News. In 2014, nine years after the SBC Center became the AT&T Center, Bear County Commissioners Court approved $101.5 million to renovate the county-owned stadium. Those renovations included new seating, an expanded concession area, and a new high-definition scoreboard. The project was again largely funded by taxpayers. Spurs Sports and Entertainment contributed $16.5 million and agreed to cover any additional costs. The remaining $85 million was covered by the Bear County Visitors Tax. It's not uncommon for stadiums and arenas to get public funding. Proponents say the cost to taxpayers is justified because of the economic boost stadiums can bring and the development they can spark. Others say that is just not the case. On one hand, building stadiums does have an impact on the local economy. It creates construction jobs. Those jobs are temporary, but once the stadium is built, fans who attend the games there spend money on concessions and parking. But a review by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis of several studies on the topic found that most economists still oppose public subsidies for stadiums. The review concludes, quote, consumers who spend money on sporting events would likely spend the money on other forms of entertainment, which has a similar economic impact. Rather than subsidizing sports stadiums, governments could finance other projects such as infrastructure or education that have the potential to increase productivity and promote economic growth, end quote. Economists generally tend to agree that publicly funded stadiums don't pay off financially. If there is an example in the United States where it worked, I would be shocked. For decades, it has been assumed that if you plop a, an arena down in the middle of an area, uh, the area will blossom. And that's simply not true unless you have the corresponding investments. Even if you take a, a completely depressed area, I mean, completely depressed area where there's virtually nothing going on in that particular part of town, and you build this massive, beautiful stadium, and then you build businesses around it and rest on the 
There better be something other than the sports franchise bringing people to that area. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says San Antonio did not prioritize investments in the area surrounding the AT&T Center for years, but he says that in the past decade, the city has turned around on this. That's where the Spurs have been very beneficial. Uh, we just launched an initiative last year with, with um, a Spurs Give that is investing in park infrastructure, particularly around uh, the east side. One plan for investing in the area around the AT&T Center is the River East Project, an idea proposed by County Commissioner Tommy Calvert. We built a river north, which was the museum reached by the Pearl. We built a river south, which was the mission reached by the San Antonio Missions. We built a river west, which was San Pedro Creek. I said we've got to have parity. We have to have a river east. A crucial part of the proposed plan is flood control, but River East is also supposed to create new housing options and retail space and hopefully bring more restaurants and bars to the area. If the $200 million plan becomes a reality, it is still years away. It's still in the feedback phase. A citizens committee is currently asking constituents for ideas. It's undeniable that development near the AT&T Center has been slow going, but Commissioner Calvert says that's to be expected. Things like the museum reach and the mission reach, they took a decade of development and still trying to get you know Congress deals to pay off the bills. And even though economists like UTSA's Les Doss says that there aren't financial benefits from publicly funding stadiums, it doesn't mean it's always a bad idea for cities and counties to do so, because having a team like the Spurs helps sell a city. You travel around the world and you say you're from San Antonio, they only ask you two questions. Two questions. Have you been to the Alamo Dome? And are you a Spurs fan? We can't forget about the major league team we already have, the Spurs. Over the past two decades, they have had success that other NBA cities could only dream of. Despite that, there still have been some moves by Spurs Sports and Entertainment that have raised some concerns about their future here. RJ Marquez takes a look at the future of the silver and black in San Antonio. Five championships and decades of success. The Spurs are part of the fabric of San Antonio. Part of the DNA of San Antonio is uh, silver and black and, and the great celebrations that we have had over the, over the last uh, couple of decades. That's built into the future of our city as well. As the city's only major professional team, the Spurs have had unlimited access to local corporate sponsorships and an NBA fan base that stretches throughout the entire South Texas region. But with the ever-changing landscape of the pro sports world, there is always some doubt about the future of a pro sports franchise, even one as successful as the Spurs. We asked some fans about what would happen to San Antonio if the Spurs ever did pack up and leave. That would be wow. a kick to morale for sure. Yeah, I think it'd be heartbreaking, definitely. I think that's like something that really brings the whole city together. And I feel it's kind of like Fiesta, like, it's just a tradition for everybody here. And so I think it'd be a big loss if they left San Antonio. There would be some outrage, I think. Who else are you gonna have to support here? Like the only other teams that are really big here are just the Roadrunners. So I think, you know, if you were to lose that major team that you know you do see on TV, it's gonna be like a lack of support and unity that you'll feel from your city. It would depend on where it went, you know. If it went to Austin, I guess that wouldn't be the end of the world, but. Oh, I wow. think that'd be the end of the world. So? Oh, yeah. Might, might be. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone would be like, what? They took, those weirdos took our team? So what's given fans reason for doubt? In 2017, Spurs Sports and Entertainment sold its WNBA franchise, The Stars, to Las Vegas. Three years later and almost out of nowhere, their minor league hockey team, The Rampage, also relocated to the desert. You might be able to argue the Silver Stars are later the stars because of somewhat of attendance. But I find it very difficult to argue the Rampage. The Rampage weren't the best drawing team in the minor league hockey, but they weren't the worst. In fact, they were pretty even. They were about averaging 7,000 fans. Fans love going to hockey games here. I'm not sure how that justifies selling off that team. That raised flags about the future of the Spurs in San Antonio. The NBA has also shown an interest in expanding to more cities in the western part of the country, like Las Vegas. And in late April, reports surfaced that the Spurs ownership group was selling a small minority stake in the team. Remember, they told us when the minority owners were considering, or some are, selling their shares, that they're committed to the city and all of the San Antonio fans still worry. The Spurs are one of the, the sharpest, um, most uh, well-run organizations in sports, period. 
And I think that you've seen some of the strategic decisions that they've made in order to bolster their brand. It's become much more of an international market for the NBA. And in fact, the Spurs are one of the reasons why. Um, and we're also attracting regional sports followers. Mayor Nuremberg feels the Spurs are in a strong position to succeed and does not believe they need to move out of the east side or further north toward Austin to expand their reach. The Spurs are, are uh, committed to San Antonio. They're committed to uh, the continued investment in community, particularly on the east side. And what we're doing is focusing on equitable geographic um, development with regard to our economic development priorities. And so you're seeing a lot of employers move into the east side. You're seeing a lot of revitalization of housing stock. You're also seeing neighborhood preservation and, and, and most importantly, investment in infrastructure so that those kinds of developments can thrive. With no immediate plans for another major franchise in San Antonio, the Spurs will have to continue to carry the pro sports flag for the city. Having the Spurs was a major event for this city to land what was then an ABA franchise and then it became an NBA franchise and imagine traveling all over the country wearing San Antonio on the front of their jersey and in fact because of the new Fiesta uniforms they're putting San Antonio script back on the front of their uniforms again just another way to advertise this city which is so dependent on the tourism industry so yes I think it's crucial we have major league teams in the city to help sell San Antonio. Our city has the size, we have the desire, and we have enough fans who want to cheer on another team with as much spirit as they've cheered on the Spurs for all these years. Only time will tell if our luck when it comes to pro sports will turn around. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode. We'll see you back here next week.